very hearty good afternoon everyone on behalf of dhenkanal science center i welcome all our viewers followers at the outset i welcome uh, dr samalendu tripathi uh, the resource person for today's uh, session friends as you all know uh, dhenkanal science center a unit of national council of science museums ministry of culture government of india is observing swachhata pakwada since uh, 16th april uh, it will culminate tomorrow and during this to make people our especially the students the future uh, maker uh, future of our nation to make them our several educational extension activities have been organized we have uh, some competitions and today as a part of that observance of swachhata pakwada we have kept a popular science lecture uh, based on theme swachhata practices in warding off new emerging diseases so how swachhata practices helps in warding off uh, the emerging diseases so for that we have with us today uh, professor samlendu tripathi ji uh, dr tripathi has completed his uh, mpharm from uh, utkal university and after that uh, he has worked on several he is having fast experience uh, experience as a reviewer of academic uh, press journals journal of biochemistry a journal of international research in medical and pharmaceutical sciences medical practice review journal of uh, complementary and alternative medical research uh even he is having experience in uh, in silico drug design in vitro and in vivo screening of drugs uh histological slide preparation and uh, biochemical analysis uh tripathi sir is having a long list of publications i'm not going to uh, name all those uh, because we better if we we'll listen from you uh, know uh dr tripathi and uh, he has participated in several uh seminars conducted workshops having national and international repute also he has attended all india uh, ai city uh, sponsored kip program at uh, birla industrial and technological sciences uh, ranchi in the year 2011 Uh, presented paper at various indian pharmaceutical congress uh, like uh, ipc kolkata ipc varanasi ipc ahmedabad ipc manipal and ipc bangalore attended several workshops i'll uh, i am not going to name all of them because it will take a long uh, time so today we have with us uh, tripathi sir at present he is uh, uh at present he is uh, working as assistant professor uh, school of pharmaceutical sciences uh, the arin and dim to be university so uh shiksha o anusandhan and uh, odisha it is popularly known as so so is the assistant professor over there and uh, for this webinar uh, may i request uh, dr tripathi please take over now the platform is yours uh, please enlighten all of us and i am sure uh, his enlight- uh, his deliberation will enlighten all of us and uh, it will reach to a larger section as uh, the same webinar is being a uh, broadcast in the social media pages of the center uh once again welcome everyone uh, tripathi sir 
please uh, take over. Good afternoon, My screen is it visible, sir? Uh, yes, yeah, screen is. Please uh, switch on your video. Only your profile for. Ah, yeah, yeah, now yeah, your screen is visible, visible now? Yeah. Yeah, it's visible now. Screen in the Swachata practice, that slides are visible? No, 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 that is not okay, yet. Okay, then I'll continue from here. Yeah. Please, please. Okay, here the power has came. I can start it from here. Okay, there is a... Okay, let me start now. Uh, two, two. Everybody, uh, two two screens are visible. Start or two. Uh. Uh, this is that's why I told my system. My yeah. Yes, yes. That's why I told my system. My... One you can uh, log out. Mm. Yes, yes. That let it be there for the reason. Yes. Mm. Surendra. Okay, sir. Uh -huh. Yes. Is it visible? Yeah, yeah. Hello? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's visible. Okay, then. Uh, sorry for this interruption. There are some technical issues here. Huh? Yeah. Okay, okay. then we'll, we'll start. Please, please uh, start. Uh, as, as Sarah has told, our today's topic will be Swachata practice in wedding of new diseases. Means, just in a broad sense, we can think of how the Swachata means our cleanliness, you can tell, hygiene, you can tell, all these things. It is helpful for wedding of many type of diseases. Okay, so mostly what we tell all the diseases, we can classify into two classes. Okay, based on their causes, we can classify them into two, two classes, we can tell. One disease, which will be your metabolic disorders or which will be affecting the body due to some disturbance in the body systems. And another group of disorders, which will be affecting, sorry, uh, okay, yeah. which will be affecting or which will be affected due to the presence of some infectious agents. Okay, so mostly the diseases which are due to a infectious agent, those things can be targeted by this. Or else we can tell those diseases we can prevent by maintaining ourselves clean, our surrounding cleans. Okay. Just we can tell that by Swachata, we can get rid of all those diseases. Okay, so before going to this topic, let's think why it is important, why government is giving now that much stress on this. Though it is in 21st century, everybody, is, everybody wants to go for discovery of new drugs, new things, everything new, our life has become this much advanced, we are telling. But still then, in this time, is it required to go back to one century back or 50 years back where we are telling cleanliness is required, cleanliness is required. So this is just a data of our India. Okay, it is uh, 
we told that WHO has uh, given a notification that or the, according to WHO study, due to lack of cleanliness, lead to an annual loss of over 6,500 every year to each Indian. So imagine we are around 150 crores. If per head it is 6,500, imagine 6,500 into 150 crores India is losing due to our lack of cleanliness. Okay, these unhygiene surroundings are the main reason for several diseases that are prevailing in our country, prevalent in our country. Our country, all developing countries, underdeveloped countries, uh, it is prevalent. And it will be astonished to know that, imagine our river, which is called as most pious river, most pious river of India, whose water, it will not decompose normally if we we'll keep it in our home. So people used to keep uh, years together this Ganga water. This Ganga water also, now it is unsafe for bathing. Forget about drinking, now it is unsafe for bathing also. In some regions, after it crosses UP and those regions, it is unsafe for bathing. Because of, it contains 120 times higher than the permitted level of coliform bacteria. It is told that in 2006, India lost about 6.4% of GDP annually because of this poor hygiene and sanitation. It is therefore imperative to imperative to have sanitation and hygiene intact both in personal and community level. We think that if we are only clean, then it will be if we can we get rid of No, we have to go for whenever we are thinking of swachata or cleanliness, it should be for us, it should be for our community, for improving our health of masses. Okay. Now, just with a brief introduction of this, let's go which diseases we may get during due to lack of cleanliness or lack of swachata which diseases we may get. Okay. So, the, uh, so you know that mostly if you are not clean, our surroundings, our surroundings is not clean, we are not clean, then we'll get affected to the to our surrounding, our soil, water and air. Therefore, I just made us made some slides just to explain that okay, which diseases we will get and what will be the consequences of that diseases? Okay, so let's discuss with the first one, soil worm diseases. These diseases what happened, these organisms used to present in the soil. So whenever any person is coming across with this organism with influence of soil, then these organisms enter to his body, they will fight with the immunity, our body will fight with those organisms with immunity. If our immunity does not become strong or does not supersede them, then there is a chance of we will get this disease. Okay, so in that the major one is plague, which is mostly occurs in Europe. It is, if you see the pandemic potential, pandemic means we can keep pandemic and endemic. There are two categories of disease we can tell. Pandemic means which can spread over to a very large group of population. It doesn't have a geographical barrier. Like now we got COVID, cholera, this all are pandemic. When we call endemic, it is specific to a specific area. Suppose filariasis, it is endemic, it is a particular area, this will affect. Okay, so in that uh, plague, the organism will be Arsenia peristis, peristis, it has got high pandemic potential, melrosis, this is Burkhatoria, Pseudomolai, anthrax, Bacillus anthrax, you know, titanus, Clostridium titani. We got rid of this titanus due to lot of, due to the uh, vaccination and everything. Botulinum, botulism, botulinus toxins, it will cause diarrhea and everything. Listeriosis, toluremia, toluremia will caused by francillus and toluresis. Then leprosy, which is endogenous to India, unfortunately. Indian subcontinent, India, in India, unfortunately, in Odisha, West Bengal and Bihar, the maximum load of leprosy is there. This is due to mycobacterium lepra. And this also, if, if, the, if the organism is weighed off from our skin, we may not get it. When this organism is persistently present on the skin or through our uh, saliva or through it enters to the body, then it used to cause. Then schizolosis, it is a type of diarrhea. Blastomycosis, it is a type of fungal infection. Histoplasmosis, histoplasm caps capsulatum, this is a type of, uh, you can call diarrhea, fever. Then sporotyposis, meningitis, all these are soil bar diseases when we are not clean enough then this occurrence of these diseases will be high. Okay. 
then these diseases somehow we can prevent we can think that okay we are preventing it we are not exposing ourselves to the soil we are covering our body we are washing every time so this small thing small habits will help us to get rid of all these diseases to ward off from all these diseases these small habits will be helpful for us then we'll see, think of the water borne diseases that we get as all of you know diarrhea diarrhea it causes approximately up to now it is a major killer in many areas it is the major killer unknowingly it used to kill us because it will be going for loss of our uh, body fluids due to its dehydration will occur and as this diarrhea will be there this may be due to a virus may be due to a bacteria may be due to any microorganism protozoan or anything okay so this is one of the most important factor for eliminating diarrhea death is just to proper sanitation and hand washing imagine just simple sanitation facility and hand washing we can get rid of this disease then cholera now it is endemic unfortunately it become endemic for 51 countries and unfortunately our country is inside this okay this is who estimate that cholera has killed 21000 to 1 lakh 43000 on yearly basis in this much developed stage also this is the condition of cholera and everything okay this occurs mostly due to the uh, contact of waste infected individual due to lack of defecation in the uh, in the open places this disease used to spread up more quickly then dysentery this is dysentery and diarrhea differences dysentery is for loose stool and diarrhea means when it is severe and only watery fluid used to go body used to lose a lot of water okay so it is due to mostly due to amoeba and bacteria intestinal infection then typhoid typhus fever okay it is approximately now also 11 to 20 million people are getting affected and it is a causing a death of 1 lakh 61000 death yearly normally okay it is a life threatening infection and the major positive organism for this one is salmonella typhi and it occurs due to the contamination of food and water eating outside or store food for means the food which has been stored for a long time without proper uh, storage capacity those foods or else something we kept it outside we forgot then okay it is good let's have it uh, non veg more proteinous proteinous food which has been decomposed so they used to cause typhoid then polio we got significantly decrease of this decrease the polio significantly and now polio cases are rarely or most not there we are polio free but still then the infection is continues to spread up if proper sanitation is not there okay these all gone our water borne diseases so first we discuss the soil from the soil those organisms those diseases will occur from water these are the major diseases which will occur other than this you can imagine that whenever the condition is moist any microorganism can grow and it can cause any type of infection it may start with a ringworm start with athlete foot it can cause anything any organ infection it can cause okay then we will come for this air borne diseases which has taken a peak after this corona and everything so now everybody is very much afraid of this and everybody want to prevent themselves from this okay so this air borne pathogens what they do they goes through our nasal tract from our nose they used to go to the lungs and in the lungs they cause inflammation they just go for inflammation of this lungs okay so they can cause in the nose they can cause in the trachea they can cause in the lungs and from lungs they can travel to the whole system which has happened for covid now okay earlier used to get simple rhinitis which will be infection of the nose or running nose okay then it will be upper respiratory tract infections then it will be if it is goes to the lungs and cause inflammation and everything so it will be causing lot of other symptoms like whenever this infection occurs any type of air borne infection occurs it will first start with the nose sinus congestion because that is the nearby gland it will be infecting that area so it will start with a sinus congestion and sore throat okay then it will go to the respiratory system low respiratory system or no, no, no. respiratory part it used to affect so if our respiratory part it is getting affected then we cannot respire properly there will be lot of mucus and everything that's why we will get coughing we will get discomfort we will get tiredness oxygen cannot be transferred we will get tiredness these muscles due to this muscular part will get weak again and due to this infections we will get fever we will get headache 
we will get different joint pains as always we are coughing automatically we will get gastric stimulus and acidity vomiting and everything due to infection in the nose we will get sore throat aches and all these symptoms we will get when we are getting a, any type of airborne diseases then the severity of that airborne diseases depend upon the organisms and depend upon the personal immunity how much our body become immune based on that these symptoms used to occur so this some common airborne diseases are here like your common like our common cold which called we call it rhinitis actually it is due to rhinovirus it is a viral disease common cold it will be uh, normal it used to go off within 2 to 3 days okay but problem with all these vir- all these viral diseases what they do they engage our immune system there so we can we may get some bacterial or some fungal or some other type of infection okay then chicken pox is a varicella zoster virus bombs is a paramoxivirus measles it is another type of paramoxivirus whooping cough it is a bacterial infection and the greatest threat to covid 19 due to sars cov 2 virus aspergillosis this is mostly occurs in uh, usa usa canada this area it is there is this aspergillus tiger aspergillus fungus it is to affect okay then tuberculosis this mycobacterium tuberculosis anthrax this is bacillus anthrax species diphtheria this is cyanobacterium diphtheriae then meningitis certain certain things which are going to the nose there is a chance that they may infected to the uh, brain and they used to cause this so these many diseases we can get if we are not preventing ourselves properly from soil water and air so soil means imagine our body we don't allow the microorganisms to stay so that is one sanitation we will not take any organism inside our body that is the sanitation that much is the sanitation we are not allowing that that is only swachhata we will not in allow any organism to stay on our body we will not allow any organism to enter in our body any microbes any infectious organisms we are not allowing them to go inside body this process of not allowing these organisms inside our body this process is of making ourselves intact from those infections we are call these things in conventional term and this is the swachhata okay then now we'll go for uh, we'll come to the topic how we'll maintain or how we'll practice this cleaning and hygiene tips so that it will be protecting us from this type of diseases this all this type of diseases okay so in that there are two type of hygiene or two type of swachhata we call one is personal another one is community when we are thinking of ourselves we should be devoid of that organism or we should not get exposed to that organism that is called that part is called as our self or we call it personal hygiene when you are thinking it as a community perspective community perspective means i will not get and nearby my people i will prevent near by my people for getting this one also that is called as community hygiene so we will discuss on this keeping this swachhata i will keep on these two points so that it will be easy for us to correlate what to do how to do how we can develop those practices for a safe or a healthy society for a healthy life, healthy personality okay so first one is personal hygiene in this we should not touch our face frequently this is a common behavior everybody Uh, we call it is a reflex behavior of us we just used to for everything we used to touch our face touch our face it is just a reflex action okay we call it is a stereotype behavior also in psychology just many people have got habit of touching their eye nose forehead cheeks chin so depend upon the people they used to touch okay so those things should be avoided even if we are uh, touching in our mouth nail biting all these things so that is first thing we should not touch our face anything then when you are coughing or sneezing into our hand we should cover our mouth and nose with your elbow tissue when coughing sneezing and dispose of those tissues immediately okay. suppose if, unfortunately if it is not there so when you are coughing up cough in front of your hand and after that clean your hand properly just wash your hand then the third one is social distancing keep your distance okay. no this distancing is not for any feelings for somebody also this is just 
a precautionary measure. Suppose somebody has bought some infections, let's have some distance from there, at least one meter. Okay, those are coughing, those are sneezing, those have bought some infections, have some distance. Or else if you want to go closer to them, just cover your body, cover your face, so that this organism cannot affect you, go to them, help them, and again come back, sensitive, just go for sanitizing everything, then you can wear those things. This distance is just to make yourself safe and you should not be a carrier for carrier of this disease to others. Okay. Then wash your hand every time and these habits will lead to, again discuss individually again. Then another one is community hygiene. Community hygiene means we should clean our hygiene things. We should go for seeing uh, hygiene of our community. So it is cleaning all around the home, cleaning the disinfectant, height of surface in your home regularly, important to precaution to lower risk of infection, cleaning of cloths, yeah, carrying, handling and preparing of the food. All these things we'll again discuss in great details of that. Okay. So let's come for the first one, precautionary measures or good personal hygiene. How we can go for personal hygiene. These things, whatever I am going to discuss now, everything, all the things we know it. But thing is that it is somewhere there slept in our mind okay therefore who and different organizations our our cities has given different uh, steps for it okay like first is the hand washing this has came properly when this covid has came so there are we call there are basic five steps wet your hand clean in running water then turn off the tap and apply soap leather and hand rubbing them together with the soap remembering that each of the back of the hand between the fingers and under the nails Scrub the hand for 20 seconds, which is personal time. Humbling up happy birthday songs are like that. We we'll just we have to clean up our hand, rinse your hand under the clean running water, then dry it with a cloth. This is common thing. Everybody used to do. Okay. But this has to be done frequently. This has to be done frequently. This has to be done with any type of exposure. We have to do it. Then what will happen with this? These organisms, whatever will be adhering to our hand, hand, nail, in the in between our fingers, they will be washed out. They will be going to the sink again. So if they are going to the sink, they will not get exposed to those organisms. Okay. Then dental hygiene, uh, our mouth, our uh, this teeth are the harbor of many organisms. Okay, that's why you will be finding whenever we are getting up, though we are uh, washing our face when we are getting up when the next day we are getting some smells a uh, maximum is to get the uh, smells it is told that american dental association has told that we have to minimum <coughs> go for at least two times plus once before breakfast and once before the bed before going to the bed it has to be there and we have to go for fluorinated toothpaste for it okay for three to four months so these depend upon those are sensitive to fluorine, you can go for anything just to clean up your mouth. Just the thing is that you have to clean up the mouth. If uh, somebody who don't want to apply paste, if you just go for a salt water, simple salt water, if you will uh, go for gargling or we will be uh, going for uh, cleaning our mouth to in the before going to the bed, that will also do. Okay, then body, you will have to take bath easily based on the skin. Uh, we have to go for applying soap, applying soap, applying oil, just to clean up our body. Then nails, it should be trimmed up. If it is not trimmed, it has to be cleaned up properly because that is also a harbor of many diseases. So this is about the uh, personal health for personal hygiene. So this is just a depiction of these hygienes. We have to see for our oral hygiene. We have to see for our skin hygiene. We have to see for our hair care because uh, the hair is also harbor of many organisms. But thing is that as they are dead cells, they have not got much affected. But unfortunately, we have got habit of touching our hair, then touching our face, touching our different uh, areas, ear, nose, everything. Due to that one, the infective organisms used to go up. Then food hygiening, nowadays maximum of us are wearing shoes, therefore, uh, but still then it has to be cleaned up. It has to, we are thinking that with shoes, we should not clean it, but we have to clean up. Because in between our nails, finger nails, there is a condition called afflatus. Some fungus and uh, organisms, bacteria can go over there. And in subsequent time, 
it used to cause uh, this nail infection and somebody those are having more sweat in their feet it used to cause different types of other infections also okay scabies mostly fungal infections used to be there okay therefore foot hygiene is required then toilet hygiene we have to clean up we have to flush up we have to uh, dispose of our waste materials in a well planned toilet should not go outside hand hygiene we have to clean our hands regularly coughing and sneezing we can cloth we have to cough and sneeze then home hygiene we have to clean our home we can clean our home because cleanliness in our uh, shastras also it is there in our hinduism we believe that if our house is clean then lakshmi ma will come we can think of like that and we can go for hygiene of cleaning our homes okay. then this this was gone for our own we are cleaning we are uh, not allowing the organisms to just enter this is these are just the preventive steps to do okay then after that we have to think of community hygiene in our community our region our area they also should not be infected with that if community get affected then automatically we are in the higher exposure side therefore if our surrounding is clean our uh, community is clean then our we think that we are less exposure to for, less exposure for all these infectious agents so for that basically our government has given five steps okay these are the five major areas from where the community is getting waste and community is getting infected first one is water source we will read that in water source because protection then disposal of solid waste and excreta solid waste management uh, waste water drainage or waste water management then we will read controlling animal rearing management of animal rearing then we will read the market hygiene this has came as a new concept now market hygiene means we are Uh, buying everything from the market okay imagine nowadays the vegetable market and everything how much garbage and everything is there so it those has to be clean up so it has taken up by the government as a new format we tell that one as market hygiene okay we'll discuss one by one this point first we'll come for this uh, solid management okay we'll discuss first this solid waste management in this the solid waste used to come from these sources like the street refuse market refuse stable litters industrial refuse and domestic refuse all these things uh, somebody is cleaning that street keeping it over there market is there from the market all waste things used to come up uh, stable litters industrial refuse all these things are the major source of the solid waste now how to manage it or how to manage it okay that are some uh, methods in that first is insanitary method means in this we need not to go for Uh, sanitizing will just will be cleaning of them like right? hog feeding and dumping we will collect them we will dump it in the isolated area so that we we'll just wait for the bacterial decomposition for it another one is hog feeding hog means pigs pigs in american english we call it hog so therefore uh, pigs will eat up all these uh, eatables and all these waste okay then Uh, sanitary method means these things what happen just to decrease or just to isolate those waste from the locality from a community to outside but we have to think of that okay that waste has to be cleaned up again otherwise if there are the waste will again increase or bulk up it may affect the community again therefore we have to follow this sanitary methods like sanitary landfill or controlling the tipping just to cover it up composting or incineration incineration will just will go for uh, burning them incineration then we will keep manure pit we will make manure from there then burial simple we will just bury them or, or else we can get the biogas plant this is the reuse of the waste materials if we will keep it in anaerobic condition we will cover it keep it in anaerobic condition this this anaerobic bacteria what they will do they will go for producing different types of biogases those gases can be used up like we are using uh, cow dung biogas this can be used from any organic material any organic wastage can be uh, repurposed for the uh, biogas plant for the manure from this biogas plant whatever whatever manure will be there that will be very safe because they don't have these gases which will be smelling okay and they are devoid of the toxin therefore their uh, their ability for growing up the crops will be very high then will come for the waste water drainage this waste water 
this we are thinking of the telling of the water those who are already used used by us okay those are telling as waste water so that will be those waste water will be example of water those are used for washing bathing cleaning flushing etc for household and business uh, premises etc uh, every industry maximum industry except the software and some rare industries everybody use water okay so those water has to be utilized properly and the drainage should be proper so this rain water from the street roof and building and other modes should be going to a, from less impervious area waste water include the industrial waste from the factory laundries and those they go for it then waste water closet system in so here uh, keeping the waste water in a closed circuit okay so they there we should go for the uh, drainage and everything so in this first rain water disposal will will just keep pipe so that it will be open up to a gutter and then it will be discharged to the sea or discharged to the uh, water body larger water body wherever it is there then water closure system this is for the treatment of excretas which are by sewer by pipe in which water is used to carry out this excretion a soil pipe for conveying this water from the closure to from the house drain means uh, this is the thing from the house or from the industry we are keeping it away we are sending it away and through to a area where we can go for uh, disposing of then sewer it is the underground pipe for conveying this all this material to uh, convey all this household effluents then it is septic tank by this also uh, we can go for uh, cleaning of the water cleaning of our excreta water in this what happen this water tight receptacle used to break down the sewage into conservancy so that the sewage become a septic and decompose occurs through the action of anaerobic organisms okay so this naturally grow up sewage under a suitable condition these things can be utilized as a fertilizer and manures and that water that water whichever will be there that can be taken up means the soil will absorb that water and it will transport in need to worry for that okay so it will it will make it comparatively in conscious it will make then i uh, will come for the market hygiene in this why that is that much important because all our food food materials our uh, livelihood things we are collecting from the market if we if now the street food at the number of street vendors are high so if that area is not clean though will be clean though everything is be will be clean organisms will enter into our body they will go directly to our stomach therefore they may cause diarrhea they will cause dysentery they may cause any type of infectious diseases so for that the ideally the market should have uh, several steps provided by the traders customers to ready access for safe water for drinking and washing this safe water for drinking for the customers and for traders if they should be have safe water for washing so now this government is also opening this earlier this market daily market also they are uh, planning and making it so that it can be cleaned up so if it is made up of uh, uh, this uh, cements and everything that can be cleaned up if they are sitting on the soil all these things they dump over there then again to borrow someone will sit on that so that increases the infectious infections uh, uh, capability or uh, this infection tendency therefore nowadays they will be finding that government is making lot of provision for the daily markets and everything then food stuff should be sold in the market should be in a clean and it should be clean and hygienic particularly meat and fish why you are emphasizing on this because these or these are life they are the or, uh, organism parts okay so they are got more prone for uh, infections okay this organisms uh, these microorganisms get ready made food from the meat and feces from the blood from the protein of the meat and fish they used to get therefore the chances of contamination will be high for them so they should be very clean and hygienic then solid waste marketplace should be disposed of properly the solid waste should be collected and disposed of daily strategically located in the dust bins and everything bunkers then market area should be properly drained and to prevent fooding insect breeding uh, floating and insect breeding in rainy season this is to be common consequences in the daily markets in the market area or vegetable market we will be finding lot of smell uh the and those water which are are moving on the on this surface uh, those will be getting coming in contact with our food 
So even though we tell that we'll be getting it, washing it off, and we'll be eating, but still then the chances of infection will be high. Therefore, will be uh, means up to now. Though Delhi is our capital, some uh, big areas, Delhi, Calcutta, let it be these areas, old areas. Up to now also they used to get lot of problem in this uh, rainy season. The occurrence of diarrhea recently used to very high. Okay, because of these things, because of uh, these small things, it used to. Uh, because in summer it will be totally dry. People not think of that. Okay, this will be getting decomposed and something will happen. So when the rainy comes suddenly, uh, the on the water they will be selling the vegetables, fruits, and uh, all those things. So they will go for insect breeding and flooding. So that should be taken care of. Then another thing is animal rearing. Many people used to go for rearing the animals: cows, buffaloes, goats, uh, chicken. Uh, then this uh, hog, every uh, they used to go for rearing them. Okay. This animal rearing, though it is a good thing, but there is a problem associated with that. Animals are also harbor of many diseases. They are the harbor in their body. Those diseases are not getting affected, but when it comes in contact with the human beings, we will get affected with that disease. So that's why this animal rearing has kept on a uh, priority basis. That's why it has kept on a priority basis. This animal hearing. So in animal hearing, that should be always kept away from the household, particularly from the cooking area and drinking water sources. These things, these two things only if we we'll keep it normal, everything will be done. From the drinking water sources, it should be away, and from the cooking area, it should be away. Since there exist a content pathogens, and that can contaminate the food, then animal waste should be disposed of properly away from the home. home. And if possible, it should be used as a fertilizer. Okay, it is also uh, based at the slaughterhouse. Wherever it is slaughter uh, or those type of things are there, they should be away from household water. Because when they are slaughtering, they are using a lot of water, and those water again they are keeping off or they are mixing it with the common running water. So they, those things should be taken care of because they are very high prone for contamination. They can contaminate anything and everything you can think of. Then some diseases factor like leishmaniasis, trypanosomiasis, flu, all these things used to get, uh, they are having the host as, uh, they, sorry, vectors as animals. Okay, this uh, diseases, they used to go to the animal first, from the animal host, they used to come to the human. Like dog can be of leishmaniasis, chicken, you know that for flu, chicken is the one of the uh, major thing for occurrence of flu and everything. So with this practice, with these small, small practices, we can get rid of many type diseases, many type of infectious diseases that we think. We common infectious diseases, we can get rid of that. So it is told that for our swachhata, for our cleanliness, we have to go for uh, clean office, clean our water supply. We start from here, the water supply should be clean, the clean and green office we told, it should be a clean up. Therefore, uh, government is going for this digitalization of the office records. More papers will be not there. More paper are not there. Will more dust will not accumulate. So that can prevent of. We have to go for plantation of uh, uh, more plants because if more plantation is there, that will increases the concentration of oxygen. Chances of anaerobic bacteria, anaerobic organisms will be less. Okay. Then. We go for outreach activities in the society means we have to clean up our surrounding. In the, some holidays, earlier we used to call it Sramadan. There is a concept in the schools and everything, we call it Sramadan. Some days we used to go outside, we used to clean up different things that should be there. Uh, then we have to go for a construction of toilet. This is the government initiative they have taken. Then we we'll go for the personalizing, this we have to think and clean habitations. All our surrounding, we think that everything should be clean. The policing, we should clean uh, police uh, on the surface of the house, on different uh, plants, on different organizations, so that that will not get uh, adhered with water, and that will not get, will not become the harbor of the microorganisms. Therefore, for this, government has launched this plan, Swastha Sarvatra. If you are clean, if you have to clean, then we will be swastha. For our swastha, for making the swastha, we have to be 
swachh therefore the government has told that swachh swastha sarvatra so that our india will get rid of all this because we though we are developing in many ways but due to our practice of cleanliness practice of all these things somewhere in the diseases we are lacking somewhere in the uh, epidemiological diseases we are lacking so it is a national health mission national health mission in joint initiative for the ministry of health and family welfare and ministry of drinking water and sanitation they have included also other ministry uh, for this uh, uh, thanks all of you for a patient hearing now if uh, anyone want to discuss anything please uh, very nice sir it was very short and sweet uh may i request uh, our viewers if you have any query uh, please uh, uh, unmute your audio and your video as well and us uh, thanks a lot sir uh, tripathi sir oh, it's a short notice mm, you are very great and uh, very nicely you have ah uh, yes kalyani ma'am yes, uh, please unmute and uh, your video also and uh, ask i know sir i am on in informal dress so no, no problem only <laughs> okay sir sir uh, your uh, talk was very informative and uh, thank you sir but i have okay. one doubt uh, that is uh, one in insuration what is the meaning of insuration again please uh, clarify acha insurer insinerators and insuration ayya yeah, tripathi sir is the right person he can yeah No, insulation means practically you have to burn it up. Okay, so burning means that also in a condition in a high thermal temperature in a closed environment to be born that is only insulation we are telling you. So you cannot tell that you are burning it outside it is insulation. No, uh, normally, Tripathi sir, I think ये भर दा the disposable syringes yes. and van. Um, those things because when you are burning it, those gases used to come outside it used to cause a pollution. So those come. things we have to keep it in a covered area you have to keep it covered and with a high thermal temperature or electricity just you have to decompose them so that the decomposed products will not go outside they will be as a solid material they will be inside that and that can be cleaned up it will not cause any environmental hazards okay sir yes sir got it thank you sir thank you welcome welcome thanks uh, kalyani ma'am and uh, at this uh, webinar was uh, live broadcast in our social media pages uh, definitely it will reach to a larger section uh, and um, it was live streamed and uh, those who didn't attend today because we have uh, circulated in several groups also in the teachers and headmasters group in uh, of dankanal science center so they can see uh, later so uh, um, now we will uh, end the session before we end uh on behalf of the family of dankanal science center uh i whole heartedly thank uh, tripathi sir for sparing his uh, valuable time i know uh, being in soa uh, you are having hectic schedule but still you have agreed uh, thanks a lot Thank and uh, for all our viewers if you have any query when you can later uh, write to us and we will uh, get it uh, clarified uh, get the answer uh, get it answered uh, through tripathi sir and i will uh, reach you uh, once again thanks to all our viewers uh, and followers uh, we will end this session and tripathi sir in future we we'll look forward for similar uh, support in future okay. also any time uh, thank you all uh, thanks everybody and i uh, will end the session okay. thank you, thank you.